The show opens in a pawn shop, where we see a group of people carrying out some sort of deal. Moments later, the seller, Marco, opens a suitcase and shows a simple key for room number 10. Then, the shop employee, Jake, grabs a portable door from his suitcase and tries the key. As he unlocks the door, a bright light appears, and he is excited to learn that the key is real. He then calls his boss, who immediately transfers $2 million to Marco's account. At that moment, a group of men burst into the room, causing havoc. Their leader, Weasel, takes out a pen from his pocket and claims that Marco sold something that belongs to him. He demands the key back, but Jake refuses to give it to him. So, Weasel attacks him with his pen, and a flash of light is seen from outside the shop. After some time, Detective Joe Miller, with his partner, Lou DiStefano, arrives at the pawn shop to examine the crime scene. There, they notice Jake pinned to the wall, badly burned and deceased. As they look up to the ceiling, they are shocked to see Marco's body hanging and severely burned. Joe remarks that the entire shop smells like someone has barbecued there. The detectives don't believe it's a robbery, since the cash machine in the register is still intact, and because it looks like the devil just ate Taco Bell and then shat his pants in here. Later, their forensic scientist, Dr. Martin Ruber, examines the dead bodies and discovers some strange things. He realizes that although their entire body is burned, their clothes are still intact. During their investigation, the detectives learn that the pawn shop is owned by a businessman named Carl, and Jake used to work for him. They also find out about a potential witness, a boy named Iggy, who is spotted nearby. Elsewhere, we see Weasel furious in his car. <laughs> That's how I imagine Weasel, ordering his guys to track down Iggy. It appears that the boy has stolen the key and fled from them. Elsewhere, Joe and Lou notice Iggy on the road and approach him for a conversation. However, he runs away from them and uses the key to enter a bathroom. Seconds later, when Joe opens the bathroom door, the boy is nowhere to be seen. In the next scene, we get to know more about our protagonist, Joe. He recently got divorced with his wife and they are currently in a custody battle for their daughter, Anna. Later, while having dinner, Joe receives receives news that Iggy has been arrested, so he quickly rushes to the police station with his daughter. In his office, he assures Iggy that he will protect him and asks about what happened in the pawn shop. However, the boy refuses to disclose any information, claiming that it is for his own good. When Joe continues to pressure him for the truth, he again uses the key and magically transports himself somewhere else. The next day, Joe and Lou meet with Carl, the owner of the pawn shop. They inquire why Jake called him before his death, to which Carl explains that he wanted to close the shop early, since the business is slow. He also claims to have no information about the murder. Elsewhere, Iggy is walking through a parking lot while talking on his cell phone. Out of nowhere, a car attempts to run him over, but he quickly dodges it. Two men then exit the car and start shooting at him. Iggy gets hit with one of the bullets, but he manages to teleport just before they get to him. Meanwhile, Joe and Anna are at home when they hear strange noises coming from the closet. Joe goes to check and notices that the door has been opened. He then approaches the door, and suddenly, Iggy appears out of nowhere. He is badly injured, and in his final moments, he gives the key to Joe, claiming that it opens every door, especially the one to Yo Mama's house. He jokes, and then he dies. After he passes away, Joe promptly contacts the police to report the incident. Later that night, while lying in bed, he gets curious about what Iggy said earlier. So, he takes the key and opens his closet, but instead of a closet, he arrives in a strange room. When he looks out the window, he sees a desert and a sign that says Motel. Joe closes and reopens the door, and this time he finds himself on a beach. Surprised, he steps outside briefly, before returning to the room. Meanwhile, at his home, Martin examines old case files of victims with burns similar to those at the pawn shop. He is horrified to discover that one of the victims had swallowed a motel key. The following morning, Anna takes the key from her father, and she also arrives at the motel room. This leaves her completely speechless. Later, she tells her dad that things keep disappearing from this room. To prove her point, Anna opens the door with the key and places some stuffed toys inside. When she closes and opens the door again, they notice that the toys have vanished. Joe is shocked to see this, and he asks his daughter to keep it a secret. His daughter asks what the hell he did with her toys. That afternoon, Joe summons Lou to his house and tells him everything about the key. The two then proceed to the room, where Lou gets terrified, but Joe assures him that as long as they have the key, they are safe. After a brief chit-chat, he asks Lou where he wants to go, and the latter says Penn State. Joe fulfills his watch, and they teleport to the field, where they watch their favorite team play. The following day, 
day at the police station, a woman named Jennifer appears, claiming that she is Iggy's sister and wants his belongings. However, Joe is aware that Iggy did not have a sister and that she has just come here for the key. He grabs her and tries to ask her questions, but she whips out a nail file, which causes him to pass out. When Joe comes to his senses, she is already gone. The next day, he takes Anna to the hospital for a routine checkup, but due to the large crowds, he is told that it might take hours. While heading outside, Joe notices a man named Wally arguing with a nurse. He abruptly brings out a bus ticket, causing the nurse to disappear. Seeing this, Joe is taken aback and he decides to follow him, but Wally catches wind of this and shows him the same bus ticket, teleporting him to Mexico. Joe is completely speechless by what just happened. Regardless, he doesn't want to stick around and he uses his key to return to the hospital. Wally tries to send him again, but Joe beats him up and snatches his bus ticket. Later, the two sit at a coffee shop and Joe questions him about the magical ticket. When Wally doesn't respond, he takes out the key and places it on the table. Seeing this, Wally is shocked and he asks him to put it away. He then reveals that the bus ticket and the key are the objects from the motel room and each object has a special ability. He clarifies that there are at least a hundred of these objects, each with its own strange powers, some useful and others not so much. There's one, he claims, that just keeps making your balls bigger. It's terrible. Joe then asks him what happened in the motel room, to which Wally responds that no one knows for sure. Some speculate that God died in that room and the objects are fragments of his corpse. Others believe it's a breakdown of some part of the universe and the objects are the result of physics going crazy. He then warns Joe that these objects act like magnets and that people are now after him and his family. Hearing this, Joe realizes Anna is in danger, so he immediately leaves to check on her. When he arrives at the hospital, the receptionist informs him that Anna has already left with her father. Just then, he receives a call from Weasel, who claims to have his daughter. He warns Joe to return him the key and gives him a location for the meeting. Panicked, Joe hastily drives towards the same and also calls Lou to explain all that's happening. Soon after, he reaches an abandoned building where Weasel and his henchmen are waiting with Anna. Joe approaches him with a gun, but Weasel shows him a pen, claiming it can cook his daughter like a microwave. I'll cook her! This terrifies Joe, and he quickly puts down his own gun. He proceeds to hand over the key, but Weasel suddenly orders his men to seize him. Realizing that he's walked into a trap, Joe fights back, and he quickly grabs Weasel pen. He then stabs one of the henchmen with it before tossing him off the roof. Damn, Joe. Joe continues to beat up the other guys while Anna watches in horror. He then urges her to run and when she looks around, she spots the key on the floor. Quickly, she grabs it and makes a hasty exit from there. Moments later, she finds a door nearby and proceeds to open it. However, at that moment, Weasel appears and tries to snatch the key from her. In the ensuing chaos, he pushes her into the room without the key and closes the door. This unfortunately means that she is gone forever. Or maybe she's just in Mexico again. Seeing this, Joe loses his mind and he starts attacking the thug. Weasel swears he didn't mean to reset Anna and claims she is still alive and can be revived. During their confrontation, another henchman arrives and starts shooting at Joe. So he quickly grabs the key, enters the motel room, and shuts the door behind him. Devastated by the loss of his daughter, he throws the key away and sits down in frustration. Goddamn magic! The next day, Joe doesn't know how to bring back his daughter, so he decides to hide in the motel room. Later, Lou calls and asks him to return, promising that they will solve the problem together. He reveals that the officers found Anna's blood in the area, and they suspect that Joe kidnapped her. Hearing this, Joe is shocked, and he finally decides to come out. He later goes to Wally and explains the situation to him. He claims that he is willing to go to any lengths to get his daughter back. Wally then explains that when two objects come together, they react and reveal new powers. So, he advises Joe to gather the necessary objects and combine them with the key to unlock the place where Anna might be. Upon returning home, Joe finds Jennifer's business card with her address. She wants to talk to him about something very important. Joe goes to the said location and meets her discreetly. He asks what she wants, to which she replies that she is part of a secret group called Legion, whose mission is to remove these objects from public use to prevent their powers from being misused. She asks for the key, 
stating that her group can help him find his daughter, but Joe refuses. Jennifer then tries to knock him out with her nail file, but Joe cleverly snatches it away. These people should really glue these things to their hands. Meanwhile, Carl is in his office, and it's revealed that he is also an object collector. We learn that Weasel used to work for him before betraying him and running away. Now, Carl instructs his henchmen to find the key as quickly as possible. Later, Joe finds Weasel and drags him into the motel room. He asks where he can get the object that can bring back his daughter. After some minutes of intense talk, they finally make a deal. Weasel will help rescue Anna in exchange for the key. Before they begin, Joe collects all of Weasel's belongings and places them in the motel room. He wants to ensure Weasel doesn't have any powerful objects that could be used against him. Based on his earlier discovery with Anna, Joe knows that when the door is closed with the key outside the room, anything that isn't its object disappears. So, when he opens the door again, he only finds Weasel's special pen. He keeps the pen for himself, and the two start their mission. Later, Weasel presents a map showing the layout of the motel room and the initial positions of all objects in the room. After some deep investigation, they discover that there is a specific prime object that can help them find Anna. This object turns out to be a tabletop clock that is in Carl's possession. So, the two sneak into his home to steal the clock. Carl soon learns of the intrusion and orders his henchmen to kill them. The two successfully find the table clock in the house. However, they have trouble exiting because there are no doorknobs nearby. Using Weasel's pen, they electrocute the security system and open a bulletproof glass door. Once inside, Joe starts tearing down the wall with an axe. At this moment, Carl and his henchmen arrive and try to shatter the glass door using different tools. By the time they succeed, the duo finally discovers a hidden door behind the wall and quickly escapes. In the next scene, Joe tries to use the clock, but it does not lead him to Anna, making him frustrated. Weasel then asks him for the key, but Joe refuses since he hasn't found his daughter yet. This leads to an argument, and Joe ends up sending Weasel back to Carl's house to face his fate. Weasel can't stop getting played. Afterward, he meets Lou and decides to come clean with the police about the strange occurrences, but at that moment, he receives a call from Martin, who claims to have found some important information about the key. The duo goes to meet him, and Martin begins explaining the power of the key. He asks to see the mysterious motel room, so Joe opens the door and takes him inside. This excites Martin, and he acts like he has seen God. God. He then insists that they should keep the key for themselves. Joe states that he has made his decision and is giving it to the police, but Martin claims he won't let this happen and shoots Lou in the chest killing him. He then tries to shoot Joe, but the latter pulls out the nail file, making him pass out. At that moment, Martin's wife enters the room and misinterprets the situation. She believes that Joe murdered the two men. He tries to explain himself, but realizing it's pointless, he uses the key and returns to the room. Soon after, Martin wakes up, and his wife is delighted to see him alive. He then calls the police and falsely accuses Joe of murdering his colleague, Lou. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.